Regardless what happens in the final round of voting, this year's city election will be historic. But for all the talk about dramatic change and trailblazing candidates, many voters are torn between small differences. That was part of the story that was signaled even before September by our guest. She's a reporter for Politico and author of its Massachusetts Playbook. We'd like to welcome Lisa Kaczynski. Uh, thank you very much for being with us, Lisa. Thank you so much for having me. Lisa, I want to have you start with where you were last night at, at one of the events for a candidate and what it was like when the music stopped. Definitely. So I was at Acting Mayor Kim Janey's event. It was in the South End by the SOA Power Station. It was in a parking lot. Uh, they had decked it out in her campaign uh, colors, you know, orange and purple clad tables, some mood lighting with some uh, kind of Halloween-esque candle lanterns. Um, you know, it had been people were trickling in. There had been some music. And then around 11 o'clock or so, it stopped. Uh, people started disbanding. Eventually, we heard from the campaign, um, you know, telling supporters to go home, get some sleep. Um, there were no real results to speak of from the city uh, because of some voting, you know, some tabulation delays from some late ballots. But, um, you know, the candidate herself never showed. And then one by one, her competitors started making speeches. And then, um, you know, it was time to call it. Well, this election has for a long time been sold as, as the change election. And now, of course, we're not so sure that and what was interesting to me is what you noticed even, even before September about the way, you know, progressives are not monolithic uh, and, and they were split. They definitely were. Um, you had three more progressive leaning candidates in this race, City Councilor Michelle Wu, City Councilor um, Andrea Campbell and the acting mayor, Kim Janey. And progressives had a really tough time with it because you had some of these more, at least by today's standards, I guess the more, um, I don't want to say traditional progressive, but Michelle Wu with the big, bold ideas, the plans, um, the visions for Boston's future. And a lot of um, very policy driven progressives right now were very in tune with that. And you saw a lot of that with Andrea Campbell too, but up until the end, some people weren't sure if she was gonna have the oomph to make it through. And she ultimately, I believe finished third. Um, whereas acting mayor Kim Janey, you know, she represented something for, um, you know, the black community in particular in Boston as, as one progressive black lawmaker told me, it was a once in a generation opportunity electing her to help, uh, you know, mobilize disenfranchised communities in Boston. So some progressives gravitated toward acting Mayor Janey because of that. Um, and, you know, even though she was newer to the game in general than Michelle Wu and didn't quite have all of the, the long held policy ideas and the visions many years in the future. Um, so yes, it was a very tough decision among progressives within the black community and it was very approved, very divisive. What about where we're headed now? Because uh, I, I was at Wu's event in Rosendale and uh, the one nutshell that she came out with is that, you know, here's a choice between bold ideas and uh, someone who's going to nibble around the edges of the status quo. Uh, what does that mean? Basically, it's setting up this very classic progressive versus moderate clash that we are now finding ourselves in heading into the November general election, where you have Michelle Wu, that progressive, the big, bold ideas, the Senator Elizabeth Warren, um, you know, kind of disciple, and she's been endorsed by her. And then you have Anissa Sabi George, who, um, you know, was the more moderate in this race, even though she has bucked that label, um, she very much does not want to be called a moderate or a centrist candidate, but she essentially became that in this progressive leaning field by kind of balancing these calls for change um, with, as she says, a little bit more realism. She's dismissed already uh, City Councilor Michelle Wu's ideas as too pie in the sky. Um, you know, she noted that Michelle wants to uh, make the tea free and uh, it supports rent control, which she said last night, she told her supporters are things that a mayor can't do on their own. Um, so you're going to see these battle lines drawn. You've been seeing them drawn pretty quickly already as we move forward. You, you, you know, uh, going back three years ago, uh, Michelle Wu and, and Kim Cheney uh, and Anissa, mm -hmm. they, they were all jumping for joy at the, at the election night party for, for Ayanna Presley. And, and here they are going off in different directions. Uh, what about the ability of voters to sort of process this? Because, I mean, take Anissa, she... She votes for police reform. Uh, she votes for curbing uh, short-term rentals. And then we have a pack and someone says, well, there might be some ties there to Trump people. I mean, what are people supposed to make of that? 
I think that this, well, it's interesting that you note this kind of sisters in service thing to start off. All of the candidates mentioned that last night. Um, you know, the four women in this race, part of the reason this race was so historic was not just because of the diversity, um, you know, the different ethnicities in, in the field and the different cultural backgrounds, but also the fact that there were four women running and they were the four front runners. Um, you know, that is historic to note in Boston. And these are all women who came up together through the council, um, you know, and followed the path laid by Representative Ayanna Presley. But now you're seeing them come into their own. This is kind of the next phase of that evolution, um, you know, where they're really striking out their policy differences um, as they work to deliver uh, Boston's first female mayor, elected uh, female mayor. I yeah, should. maybe you can develop this a little bit because, you know, you know, why do we have so many women in, in, in who are positioned to take power this way? Because if you look back a few years, you, you see this whole, you know, pathway you know, 2012, there's Michelle Wu, who's sort of behind Elizabeth Warren, you know, trying to get support at a neighborhood parade at, at another neighborhood event. There's Kim Janey, you know, doing it for Ayanna Presley. What's mm -hmm. going on there in that pathway? This is just something that's been building for many years um, in the same way that it, the pipeline of more candidates of color has been building up the pipeline of more women candidates has been building up for many years now and these candidates had put in the time as community activists had running council races you know Anissa didn't win her first council race um, and then made it onto the council. So this has been um, something that has been years, if not decades in the making in Boston, but it's kind of accelerated over the past decade. Um, again, through that pathway that Ayanna sort of started in her election to the council um, in 2009 and was furthered by Michelle and Andrea serving as council, you know, the first um, woman and first woman of, um, the first black woman to serve as council presidents. Uh, so this is something that I think women have worked really hard for in Boston, um, which is, we all know has elected uh, only white men for nearly 200 years. Um, so this is definitely a sea change moment. What about uh, the black vote that was supposed to be so pivotal? If, if you at least add up the totals for, for Janie and Andrea Campbell, you get close to 40%. And there's, there's a Latina vote out there somewhere. Maybe the numbers will show us you know, how it congealed maybe, but are those gonna matter in November? I think they definitely will. And if you do look at it that way, like, yes, none of the three black candidates who were in the race made it through, but then you did have a plurality of voters, um, you know, who voted for those candidates. And the candidates um, going forward, you know, city councilors Michelle Wu and Anissa Asabi George very much need to keep that in mind. Um, you're already seeing them sort of start to make overtures to Black Bostonians um, who are hurt this morning. Um, you know, a lot of them really wanted, again, this is sort of similar to what happened in 2013, where votes were split among several Black candidates and, uh, and no one made it through. Um, so I think that it's going to be very important. I mean, this is a big, it's a, it looks to be um, going down a little bit for the census numbers that we just got, but it is still a very important and um, historically overlooked and marginalized group within Boston that these candidates need to pay attention to going forward and work with. What about uh, Sybe George's uh, appeal? Uh, is this just because uh, older, wider voters tend to be overrepresented in a city preliminary or, or is there something else going on? Uh, well, that's definitely part of it. I mean, she was able to kind of stitch together the same, um, well, I guess we don't know that quite yet, but she seems to have been able to kind of stitch together that same um, older uh, super voter, more white support that uh, former Mayor Marty Walsh was able to do, though, of course, we don't really have those breakdowns yet to really know that. So that is part of it. She does represent a little bit more than some of the other candidates in the race that a little bit more of that old school Boston um, vibe a little bit. Um, I'm sorry, I just completely... So, so speaking of the vibe, <laughs> I certainly heard that in her commercials on TV, in her own voice. I come from Dorchester originally, so yeah. I know that when I hear it. Absolutely, and I feel like people on the trail were able to recognize that and you know this ended up being uh sort of unfortunately given the historic nature of this a lower turnout election i don't believe it reached the 2013 levels and we kind of already knew that anisa asabi george would benefit from that um because of that more kind of old school super voter in boston that more traditional uh boston resident well thank you very much for taking the time to be with us of course thank you so much for having me there was lisa kashinsky from politico